So to do that, I use actually an inspiration from a toy that I had when I was a kid. I don't know if you have that in Hong Kong, but we did, where I grew up, you had this all the time. It was just a block of wood, a beautiful carved block of wood. And in the block of wood, there were these holes cut. There was a round hole and a square hole and a rectangle. You're nodding your head. Do you have one for your kids? A triangular hole? I, I had one when I was a kid. So the, the, there was a block, of, you know, the square fit in the square, the triangles fit in the square, the, the triangle, the circle fit in the circle. So the triangle, of course, won't fit in the circle, and the circle won't fit in the square, right? But, but, if you have a circle that has the outer diameter to be exactly the same as the square, it fits perfectly. And in fact, if you adjust it, you can rest this edge and this edge against here. And now you can align, if it's a cylinder in a square, you can align it perfectly. It just lines up perfectly. And look, there's four spaces here that you can put a fluid. And the tube, the cylinder, remember, is neck down. It's a very narrow orifice. So if I put a fluid here and a fluid in these four spaces, I can bring fluids together in a very simple way. I can put one fluid in the middle and the second fluid around the outside. And this orifice now will create a stream of fluid and that will create drops. So this is what it looks like. Here's the square capillary. You can buy these now. They're commercial. The round capillary, you put them together, you line them up. You build a device like this. Remember I said we like simplicity in the lab. It's all held together with just five minute epoxy. Anderson, somebody as great as him, he can make a device like this in half an hour, really. And he can teach people how to make it in a few hours. So we teach everybody how to make these things. And this is the way it looked in the, in the lab, connected with some pumps. We look in a microscope and it works really well. So here's one of the devices. Now you're looking with a microscope. So the square device is up here and down here. One fluid is coming here, and a second fluid is going through the, the orifice of the, of the capillary tube. This is about 10 microns in diameter. These are about 20 or 30 microns in diameter. And you can see all the drops are exactly the same, one by one by one. And they're going at, look, at one per second, right? Actually, that's not true. Every time I show you a movie, it's taken with a high-speed camera and slowed down. So I'm really making them more at 1,000 per second. But they're all the same. In fact, I told my students, I said, okay, well, you know, what's the variation in size? How different are they in size? And they said, oh, there are a few percent difference in size. I said, oh, good. How did you measure it? They said, well, we took these images like this. We took still images. We took a circle. We fit the circle carefully to the to the uh, outside and we measured how different the circles were that fit this thing. I said, oh, that's great. That's a good idea. What's the uncertainty of the way you measured it? Oh, they said a few percent. I said a few percent. Well, how do you know the uncertainty in the size of a few percent? You don't know. In fact, we couldn't measure the uncertainty in the size. They're so uniform in size. They're really perfectly uniform in size. It's very difficult to measure the uncertainty. So they are a few percent, but at most a few percent. What does this remind you of? Drip, drip, drip. This is actually dripping, we call this dripping. And so we label this dripping. And why we do that is if we increase the flow rate here, you form a jet. See this jet? But you still form drops. But the difference is if I, let me try and hold my laser pointer where the drops are formed. And you see sometimes they're formed where my laser pointer is, but sometimes they aren't. So now when you form this jet, you still form drops but they're not as uniform in size. They're not formed quite as uniform, but they still form drops very well. In fact, this dripping and this jetting is something that you should be very familiar with. Oh, did I tell you, did I tell you that this talk has homework problems? It does. You have to go home and do this experiment. You have to do it. This is a faucet. Just go home to your faucet, your kitchen, your bathroom, your sink in the lab, wherever you like to go, and turn it on very slowly. And you'll see that it goes drip, 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 drip. But then turn it on just a little bit more, just a little bit more, and it'll form a jet, it'll form a stream, but adjust it just right, watch right at the bottom. And if you get that jet just adjusted just right, you'll see it always breaks up into drops before it hits the bottom. 
And if you find it too difficult, don't give up. Go outside and get a water hose, something that really sprays water as far as you can. And spray it, but spray it as far as you can. And you'll see it always breaks up into drops. A stream of fluid always is susceptible to break up into drops. And the reason is simple, that surface tension wants something to have as little surface as possible, and having a cylinder has more surface than a sphere, so it's always susceptible to break into drops. In fact, you can understand now what's going on very simply. Here, in this case, you're forming a drop, but the surface energy is sufficient. The surface force is sufficient. If it's small enough, it's sufficient to hold it in place. And if it grows very slowly, the surface forces are always sufficient to hold it in place until finally it gets big enough that the force of gravity overcomes the force of surface tension. And exactly at that point where these two forces are balanced, the drop breaks off and falls. And if your faucet is clean and uniform, it's always exactly the same. And that's exactly what you were seeing in the dripping case. By contrast, if it's a, if it's, um, a stream of fluid, this is always susceptible. I won't go through the physics. It's simple physics. It's always susceptible to a small indentation that grows and splits it up into two drops. You always break up into drops like that. Okay, so you can have this dripping and this jetting. You can make emulsions very easily. But then Andy Utada came along. We called him Handy Andy. We called him Handy Andy because he went to France to show some friends of mine in France how to make these devices. And in France, they don't say Andy, they say Andy. <laughs> and Andy, yeah, Handy. Well, he is handy. He was very handy. And he was, he was another graduate student. And like all good graduate students, all really good graduate students, he made mistakes. <laughs> but he learned from his mistakes. So Andy, he connected things in the wrong way. But it was a really brilliant solution to a problem that we didn't know existed yet. So he, instead of doing it the normal way, instead of doing it in this uh, co-flow direction, everything in the same way, he connected it backwards. So now the outer fluid came this way, and the inner fluid, instead of coming in this direction, came in the opposite direction, but he collected everything through the same orifice. That works just as well, but now the outer fluid is flow focusing. You're getting hydrodynamic flow focusing of the inner fluid. So you're making even a thinner stream through here, and that works really well. Here's the dripping case. You can see the drops being formed, and you can form a jet. You can't even see the, uh, the capillary, the collection capillary, except for this piece of dust because the index of refraction is the same as the oil. In this case, now remember, this fluid is coming from over here, and this other fluid, the outer fluid, is looping around from this side. But it works just as well. 